It is China, 1936. A new baby boy named Xie Cheng Gang arrives to Xie Yuan Yang Fu, mother of a diplomatic family of the Canton region. Within a few short months, the Japanese occupy Nanking and massacre tens of thousands of innocent Chinese. The boy and his family luckily escape to the French quarter of Shanghai. His father manages to get his family aboard one of the last boats leaving Shanghai for Taiwan before the Japanese invade. They are now refugees. It may sound like the plot to a major movie, but John C. lived it. When John left Nanjing to go to Shanghai, um, when the massacre occurred and he stayed with his grandmother, he was without his father for 13 years. When the family was finally reunited, they faced either returning to communist China or boarding another freighter headed to America. His brother, Dr. Charlie C., explains. That was a long boat ride. It took us 17 days, and the wave was pretty big, you know. We, we saw, in those days, we saw this, it's a cargo ship. And it was, it was an empty ship. <laughs> so when, 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 when the, the, the wave comes, right, the head of the ship would go all the way up, right? Then you would all the way go down, you know, burying to the wave. In the first few times, we thought it would never come out again. <laughs> and they came to New York, and his father was really looking for a position. And uh, eventually, he got a position as the ambassador to the Vatican in Rome. Um, he did place Charlie and, uh, and John in an orphanage and uh, for them to continue um, their schooling and living in this country. And, and he went on to, uh, to Rome. He is just 14. There, he's faced with a daunting challenge to learn English. Determined and motivated, he spends his time translating everything he can to teach himself the language. He, he told us, because he's so smart, he said he would go in line when they would you know, get their porridge or whatever, they were, the gruel that they were eating. He would um, ask for only half of a serving. And we're like, half a serving? And, and so then um, after he asked for half a serving, he said he could eat that really fast and go back in line and get a full bowl. So he'd get a bowl and a half. Whereas if you went for a whole bowl, by the time he finished it, he would, there would be nothing left. So he was pretty smart in getting more food. He refused to see himself in any way that would deter him from what he wants. You know, he refused to see life that way. And I just think that is, is, is one of his greatest attributes, is that no matter what's what the odds are, what's around him, that he is able to take any situation and make it into an opportunity. You know? And with opportunity came a possible visit from fate. Then on weekends, and uh, we go to work at Chinese restaurant. And in those days, those also were our, the biggest meal of the week. We loaded up on weekend. You know, one of the gentlemen came in was Carl Reiner. And he has a big family. He used to bring his son, that's, I believe, it's Rob Ryan. John sets his sights on many things that fascinate him. One day, you know, in the back room, you know, I, I just walk around and see what he's doing. So I went to the room. I say, hey, what are you doing? He was actually had a, you know, a, a, a dollar bill on the side, and he was drawing, copying a dollar bill. It was a very good copy, you know. <laughs> so John is really, uh, you know, uh, you could ask him to draw a few more bills these days. <laughs> I remember as a young child, he would draw beautiful pictures, and he would um, do cartoons, and he would also, there were these really cool um, eggs he would make. We would empty out the eggs like around Easter time, and instead of, you know, dipping eggs in, he would draw intricate, like a king and a queen, and then we'd fill them up with sand, and then they'd stand up, and it was like this incredible, beautiful, um, exquisite art piece that he would make just for, for the fun of it. Although he has a passion for art, John's father guides him toward the study of engineering. By 1960, he earns college scholarships that lead to a master's degree in electrical engineering. His first real job is on the assembly line at a staple company. At age 24, John takes on an entrepreneurial challenge starting Microstate Electronics Corporation, 
a company that produces and markets semiconductors with microwave applications. They supply the tunnel diode amplifiers that go aboard a spacecraft bound for Venus. The company is bought by Raytheon in 1964. John becomes president of the new subsidiary in New Jersey. It is here that John meets an Italian-American woman, Anna Maglione. They fall in love, and in 1966, they marry. Anna helps John raise three children from a previous marriage and has two more children, making it the family of the seven seas. In 1970, they are asked to relocate with the company. The seas decide to stay where they are, and John tries to start up a new company. They just could not raise the money, could not have people back them up, and it folded. And it actually, it was the first time, um, I think, in John's life ever that he went to the unemployment line once. In 1972, optimism again prevails, and the family rallies behind him to set out and start again, this time in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, with Gerald Electronics and another young entrepreneur named John Malone. John C. is fascinated by a new concept called broadband communications. He seems a daydreamer to some, but his visions of the future prove shockingly accurate. He came home, he was all excited. He had this, this brochure that I think he'd done the graphics of, and it was about the potential of cable. And it was, and he said, you know, you can do your shopping on it, and you can, you know, it'll be two-way. And So my father had this unique relationship with television from, a, from early days. I, that was in the early 70s. In 1977, a young cable network, Showtime, asks John to help them pilot the pay TV service into a growing marketplace. In 1984, his old friend, John Malone, invites him to move to Englewood, Colorado, and join a company named Telecommunications Incorporated. He is the most consummate entrepreneur that I've ever met. There's nothing that he runs into that he doesn't decide that he can figure out and solve. Most guys, you know, they'll run into a barrier and they'll stop. With responsibilities in strategic planning, new business development, programming and public policy and government relations, John finds himself with a cable giant, even testifying before Congress. In 1988, John's focus expands to high-definition television, fiber optics, and direct broadcast systems. When the Japanese are about to uh do another Shanghai on Johnny, you know, he invents digital compression uh, to blow out the Japanese. The Japanese spent billions of dollars developing this high-definition analog standard. And in one fell swoop, he blows it out with this uh, digital. That story I'm not sure will ever get told. And I'd say that's one of the greatest achievements in our industry was the the heading off of a very spectrum inefficient high definition standard. But he doesn't stop there. In 1990, he convinces John Malone to invest in a new idea, the Encore Media Group, which is now the largest cable programming network in the world. Along the way, even garnering a visit from the president. Some of you may know that I'm sort of a, a movie freak. I think that if you've ever seen my dad uh, park a car in New York City, you would get a good sense of what he is like. He would be fitting a Lincoln Town Car in, in a space the size of, like that a, a Mazda wouldn't fit in. Um, but through sheer perseverance and uh, ingenuity and, and will, he would get that car in there. If there is a will, there's a way. There really wasn't anything that he thought he couldn't accomplish, and there was nothing that we thought he couldn't accomplish either. So I think that that whole, whatever it is, you can do it, you can work through it, uh, has really affected uh, all of the kids, and, and probably a lot of people who he's touched through work as well. If he's tried to relay anything over the years, uh, it has to do with fear, and that, that fear is just a state of being or state of mind and it's nothing to let hold you back that you should never be afraid to make a fool out of yourself you should always go out there and do what you can do and never be afraid of what you look like to other people 
He has this little boy side that a lot of people don't get to see. And that little boy side is, um, it just, it's so sweet. It's like, it's usually when he um, has that little mischievous grin on his face. John and Anna were skiing in uh, Breckenridge and they, they were going on this double diamond slope. And Anna is a beginner skier. So it was a black double diamond and, and they, were, they got off the lift and they're looking down the, this very steep incline and Anna's, you know, she's just standing there just in shock and she's not going down. So John gives her a little push and says, as she's going down the hill screaming, he says, think positive. <laughs> so. Perhaps of all the badges that decorate John C's history, the one that should be most honored here tonight is that of a valiant mentor. Those who know him closely are aware that beneath his driving passion for perfection lies a man of unceasing dedication. The broadcaster has to understand the importance of educational television, uh, understand that by them moving in small steps, they can create a giant wave eventually. Committed to helping others reach for the infinite possibilities that he believes can and should be available to everyone in this wonderful free country. In January, Wei learned she has a brain tumor and doctors are unable to remove it, but her classmates are doing what they can to help her take a very special trip. Wei hasn't seen her grandparents back in China since she was five years old. We just heard uh, late this afternoon that the founder of Stars Entertainment has offered to match up to $10,000 the money that they raise Whoa. on this walk. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Wow. On behalf of the state of Colorado, I congratulate you, John, and I thank you for everything that you've done and everything that I know you still want to do. You have become the leader of a category and an industry and made followers of all the big shots. I've had several conversations with John C. about cable channels and programming and so forth. And after one hour of talking to him about all these things, I am sure that everything he said is totally accurate and very insightful, but I can't understand one thing that he said. Am I the only one or are you guys all in the same boat? And congratulations to you on 10 years of truly reaching for the stars. I'm sure the next 10 will be at least as good. In an industry that's full of it, John can really recognize it. Beloved guy, wonderful human being. Inspirational. Passion is spelled J-O-H-N-S-I-E. I thought he was a really charming, sweet, good man. But asking all of, you know I mean, to me to donate all of Miramax's movies free to stars and encore, I thought that was, you know, just a bit too much for the first meeting. And the, he will often take a piece of one metaphor and add it to another metaphor and he puts it together sort of in a Yogi Berra way. John C. is a guy who if he thinks it's a good idea, you better listen. You know, sort of like when John Malone thinks he's going to make an investment. He is one fast-moving target always in the cable industry and to see him behind the wheels of a race car was, was so fitting. Happy anniversary, John. We do love you. John, we finally did it. Happy 10th anniversary. Happy 10th anniversary. Happy 10th anniversary. From the Great Wall. Happy anniversary, Stars Encore. Thank you, John C. Woo! John, you are the best of the best. Happy birthday, dear Stars Encore. Number one in new hit movies. I am extremely proud. I love you and congratulations. You've done an amazing job. I love you. With all the luck, John. He's my best friend. I just love you so much. <laughs> the best is yet to come. <laughs>